thank you for the invitation here to speak today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, coming from Denmark, a country with a formal opt-out from the monetary union, my job here today is to present a few points from the perspective of a non-euro area EU country. Before setting out, I would like to stress an underlying yet undeniable fact, namely that it is of paramount importance for all EU member states, irrespective of whether they become members or not, that a banking union will be successful. Financial stability in the euro area is a prerequisite for financial stability in all EU member states, and it is a prerequisite for economic recovery and growth in the EU as a whole. My second point of departure is that of the single market. The euro and EMU were originally conceived as important steps to creating a better and deeper single market, and the banking union should be seen as a natural next step. The impetus for the, re for the recent efforts to create a banking union is, though, by contrast, uh, crisis-driven. Nevertheless, from a Danish perspective, our assessment of the coming banking union remains centered on whether the proposed changes will remove the functioning of the internal mar EU market in financial services, and it will improve the functioning of the internal EU market in financial services and provide a level playing field more generally in that industry. A key challenge, as we see it, is thus to make sure that the creation of the banking union does not create new barriers or fragmentation within the EU. The design and setup of the banking union matters a lot to an outs country like Denmark. First of all, from day one, two of the largest financial institutions operating in Denmark will have important parts of their operations supervised by the ECB. These two, two stand behind over 50% of total outstanding loans from Danish banks. The SSM will thus become an immediate part of our supervisory universe, whether we participate or not. The comprehensive assessment of the SSM will also, to as large an extent as possible, be mimicked by the Danish authorities. As long as that exercise is sufficiently tough, diligent and candid, it will vest the ECB and SSM with instant high credibility. It would also, I believe, strengthen the role of the ECB in the setting of overall EU supervisory standards going forward. In our opinion, all outs countries should be closely involved in the preparatory work of the SSM, including in the development of the supervisory handbook and in all aspects of the comprehensive assessment. Close involvement of outs in the remaining work will create a greater sense of ownership and comfort, which at the end of the day could stimulate the appetite for the participation of non-euro EU countries in the banking union. Turning to the single resolution mechanism, it will be a somewhat different creature from the SFM. Its credibility will take longer to build. The lack of a proven track record of non-disruptive resolutions, the lack of a build-up common resolution fund to start with, and a probable lack of strict common rules for bail-in up until 2018 are important challenges that will have to be overcome. Again, seen through the lens of the single market, it would be of the utmost value to have strict common rules for shareholder and creditor bail-in with very limited discretion at the earliest possible date. In our view, the proposal whereby the joint resolution fund could be drawn upon to finance resolution, but where there would not be recourse to full bail-in of shareholders and all unsecured creditors until much later would be clearly unfortunate. This would also expose taxpayers to larger risk. Full implementation of the BRR directive bailout clause already from 2015 rather than 2018 would clearly make more sense. Another issue is financing backstops. First, a single resolution fund is an imperative. Beyond it, and even wholly outside the proposed SRM framework as such, the euro area countries have the European stability mechanism as an ultimate common backstop for resolution funding. That is all uh, well, but we absolutely have to make sure that there is some form of equivalent backstop mechanism for non-euro area countries, should they decide to participate. In this regard, we welcome the statement coming out from uh, the most recent ECOFIN meeting on November 15, where the importance of equal treatment was underscored by the Council. However, we know that a practical solution giving body to this principle is yet to be agreed on. To me, the issue of ESM equival equivalence is intimately linked both to the, no to the norm of a level playing field 
as well as to what I would term as one of the key advantages of possible Danish participation in the banking union. That is that the banking union would be effective in providing an insurance scheme for the failure of a systemic financial institution. Denmark is home to a large and very concentrated banking sector. Financial sector assets to GDP are close to 400%, and our largest individual institution is also measured by its assets as share of GDP in the very top end of European banks. So while the Danish system today is well capitalized and robust, with our most recent stress tests indicating resilience to even large macroeconomic shocks, the inherent exposure from a large concentrated system implies that joining a larger pool of or insurance system makes sense. But it has to be a system with strict principles, strong governance, and full equivalence, including for financing backstops. At the same time, another characteristic of the Danish financial system is the strong integration in the wider Nordic market. As long as there's a diverging approach to banking union participation among the Nordic countries, some benefits from joining such as strong central supervision of the large cross-country institutions will be diluted. And hence, again, the very high importance that we attach to the single market aspects of the banking union project. So where does that leave Denmark in relation to emerging banking union participation at this particular point in time? Well, the Danish government is fully recognizing the high importance of the banking union while noting that it awaits the conclusion of negotiations on the main elements to make a full assessment of the potential benefits and drawbacks of participation. At the central bank, we have the view that the current outline of the banking union is clearly promising. Harmonized supervision of high quality and sound overview of cross-country banking groups will benefit financial stability across all participating member states. And to achieve its full potential, <coughs> joint supervision will have to be complemented with a robust system of resolution, including for the largest, most complex and interconnected firms. A precondition for an outs country considering participation is that this system has a single resolution fund at its core. By moving resolution to the supranational level and by staying to the principle of minimizing taxpayer liability in case of bank failure, we believe the, bank, the sovereign bank feedback loop would be significantly weakened. From a Danish perspective, it also remains of decisive importance that supervision and resolution within the banking union will be conducted with full regard to the diversity of credit institutions and their size and business models as it is spelled out in the SSM regulation. To be more precise, it is important for us that the special characteristics of Danish mortgage credit institutions are taken into, into account also when SRM rules are set. As I've indicated, there are thus a number of important points that remain to be decided upon, but overall the emerging design and content of the SSM and SRM seem to be in line with important principles cherished in my country. Thank you for your attention.